Let's face it, we are in the era of digital media and the idea of high quality sound has taken on a completely different meaning than ever before. We've all heard countless arguments about the idea of certain MP3s at a certain bit rate encoding becoming inferior or the benefits of FLAC versus AAC and all sorts of nerdy discussion. But the truth of the matter is, while many people may make these arguments, very few know the actual facts. Let's concentrate on MP3s as they're without question the most common digital audio form you find today. The term actually stands for MPEG Audio Layer 3, and MPEG itself stands for Moving Picture Experts Group, and in case you're wondering, that group came together in about 1988. At its core, an MP3 is a way of creating a very lossy, heavily compressed version of a certain algorithm, and it's designed to create a faithful reproduction of the original audio file. The trick is, though, the MP3 takes up far less actual space than the original audio. As you might expect, when you deal with higher rates of compression, you find a significant loss in overall audio quality. And as you go into heavier compression, you find a similar amount of overall quality loss. Just for an example, an audio file that's encoded at 128 kilobits per second is approximately 1 11th the size of the original audio file. So that's kind of the science side of it. But the real question is, can you actually tell the difference? Some people state that they can easily tell the difference between an MP3 at any encoding rate and an MP3 versus an uncompressed WAV file. Others will claim that it's once it dips below 160 kilobits per second that the real differences can be heard, and this argument goes on forever. While your friends might claim they can hear the difference, the facts tend to disagree with them, as a massive number of music companies, electronic companies, magazines, and all sorts of people have done countless blind tests, letting people listen to different MP3 encoding rates and WAV files and asking them to pick which is which. Over the course of hundreds of thousands of tests like this, approximately 5% of the people can tell the difference between a 160 kilobit MP3 and a WAV file. So from this, you might take the fact that anything at 160 kilobits or higher is certainly equivalent, and anything below you could term inferior. Now, when it comes to audio files, of which I am proudly one, you start to deal with things like SHN, OOG files, FLAC files, and all sorts of fun acronyms. In my opinion, though, FLAC is all you need to know. Simply put, FLAC stands for Free Lossless Audio Codec, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It allows audio files to be compressed much in the same way as an MP3 where the file size itself is smaller, but in this case, none of the audio data is lost. Most portable music players today can already support FLAC or you can modify it to support FLAC. And for those who really appreciate all the nuances of great music, I can't think of any other way to listen. In the end, MP3s are a phenomenal advancement in technology as they allow us to carry with us so much more music taking up such little space. I for one do not miss the days of having to drag around huge binders of CDs and cassettes just because I might get the inkling to listen to some random song at some random time. Yet at the same time, MP3s do create a situation where people may become accustomed to listening to music at an inferior encoding level and not getting everything there is to be heard from each of these songs. So while you may be quick to brush off people who claim that they won't listen to anything at a less than 160 kilobits per second, there is in fact some truth to that argument.